This video is a brief introduction to barycentric coordinates and a simple but very useful geometric toolbox with which we can tackle a wider range of geometry problems that are not easy to tackle otherwise. Those who are familiar with vector geometry will be able to use what we present very quickly because in essence barycentric coordinates are glorified vector geometry. Because our goal is to keep the video as simple as possible, we will limit the references to vectors to just one. We will limit ourselves to the special case of plane geometry, although similar things apply in higher dimensions. While Cartesian coordinates are based on two perpendicular lines, the barycentric coordinates are based on a triangle. We will look at three different ways of defining barycentric coordinates that are usually equivalent. Definition number one, the vector-based definition. Given a triangle ABC, we define the barycentric coordinates of a point K as the unique real numbers x, y, z for which the following two conditions hold. Using this definition, we can prove all the formulae and properties that we will present subsequently. However, this definition is not the most appropriate to understand the geometric interpretation of barycentric coordinates. Also, because we want our approach to be as simple as possible, we will not use either this definition or vectors in general. Let's just keep in mind that these three coordinates sum to one, so if we know any two of them, we can always calculate the third one. To better understand the geometric interpretation of the barycentric coordinates, we firstly observe that the point K defines with the sides of the triangle ABC three triangles. Based on this observation, we will proceed to the second definition, the area-based definition. The barycentric coordinates of a point K are three numbers x, y, z corresponding to the three vertices of the triangle A, B, C and the sides opposite these vertices. They express the percentage of the area of triangle ABC covered by each of the colored triangles in the figure. For example, if the large triangle ABC has an area of 100, while the blue triangle with side AB opposite vertex C has an area of 20, then the third barycentric coordinate of point K, ZK, has a value of 20% or 0.2. The area-based definition with a simple transformation leads to the third definition, the length-based one, which is described in the following figure. Using this definition, we can give the geometric interpretation of the barycentric coordinates. Suppose we want to define the barycentric coordinates of a point K. More specifically, suppose we want to define the third coordinate ZK. Let's assume that the distance of vertex C from the side AB equals to 1. It is not necessary that this is the case, but let us imagine that it is. The coordinate ZK is the distance of point K from side AB. For the specific position of k on the screen, it is equal to 1. As we move away from side AB, the more this coordinate increases. As we get closer to side AB, it decreases, and when we fall on the side AB, it becomes 0. And if we continue, cross the side AB and exit the triangle, it will also get negative values. But let's fix K 
at a position with coordinate CK equal to 0 0.2. We can calculate the coordinate YK in the same way. For the specific position of K, YK is equal to one third. It goes without saying that we can do the same for the coordinate XK, but this is not necessary because we know that the coordinate sum to one. So we can find that XK is equal to seven over 15. Often the coordinates of K are written more simply by multiplying them by the least common multiple of their denominators. Although we can multiply them by any number. This form is called the unnormalized one. Generally, when we see barycentric coordinates separated by a colon, this means that they are given in a normalized form. To switch to the normalized form, we add them and then divide them by their sum. One thing that makes barycentric coordinates a powerful geometric tool is that the barycentric coordinates of a multitude of points of interest are known. Given any triangle ABC, we will suffice it to mention the barycentric coordinate of its in center, centroid, and the Lemuan point, that is the intersection point of its simedians. The symbols X1, X2, and X6 correspond to the clark kimberling notation for those points. We will point out that these expressions are in unnormalized form, and we will recall that the normalized form is obtained by summing the coordinates and dividing them by their sum. Now we will proceed by presenting the equations of basic geometric objects, that is, lines and circles. If we have two distinct points P and Q, not necessarily normalized coordinates, then the line epsilon passing through P and Q has an equation elegantly described by the following red determinant. Next, let us consider the points P and Q in normalized coordinates. And suppose we have an additional point R in normalized coordinates as well. The area of the triangle PQR, measured in units of triangles ABC, is again given by a determinant. Also, the line epsilon primed, which is parallel to epsilon, and passes through R, which can be unnormalized, has an equation described again by a determinant. Consider again two points P and Q and the line PQ that they define. Consider also any point K. We want the equation of the line epsilon perpendicular to PQ that passes through K. To this end, we consider the difference between the coordinates of points P and Q. Here we will emphasize that P and Q must be normalized, and as an aside, the differences are the barycentric coordinates of the vector from P to Q. Let them be a point on epsilon, consider the coordinates of M, and form their differences with the coordinates of K. Now we can get the equation that the coordinates of M must satisfy. We will complete the set of basic tools of the barycentric coordinates with the formula that gives the square distance between points P and Q and the equation of any circle for normalized coordinates and unnormalized coordinates. If we can summarize in one line the power of barycentric coordinates is that they allow us to translate the geometric condition into a relationship between the lengths of the triangle sides with respect to which they are defined. We will conclude our presentation by solving a typical problem we can tackle with barycentric coordinates, which is going to explain this. So, suppose we have a triangle ABC 
who's in center x1 and its lemma 1 point x6 lie on a line epsilon that is parallel to side BC of the triangle. We are given that the side BC of the triangle is equal to 1. We want to calculate the value of b squared plus c squared over b plus c, which will be found to be the same regardless of the length of the sides b and c. Point x1 has barycentric coordinates a, b, c, and we want to write the equation of the line epsilon, which is parallel to b, c and passes through x1. Point b has normalized coordinates 0, 1, 0, and point C has normalized coordinates 0, 0, 1. We form the differences of the coordinates of B and C, so we can write the equation of epsilon. Point X6 has barycentric coordinates A squared, B squared, C squared, and since we know it lies on epsilon, we can plug them into the equation of epsilon. So by calculating the determinant, we find the requested value to be equal to 1. At this point, our presentation is complete. Thank you for watching us.